welcome. Today is uh, Friday, August 27th. I have Teddy underneath my desk here. I just turned the camera around a little bit. I was trying to just find a new angle to film. <laughs> it's, it's not really, I don't think it's the best view you guys have back here, but um, with all the cords, really just not working. I'm sorry. I'm just going to go back to what I always do. <laughs> Turn it this way. What a mess. What a messy beginning. <laughs> Making me look so unprofessional, which I am, so that's fine. Okay, welcome. Today is August 27th. It is episode 32. And uh, welcome. If you are new, welcome. If you are not new, welcome. Let me show you Teddy because he's just right here. Hey, baby. Um, I have finished objects to show you this time. I'm so excited. For the last time, I didn't have anything to show. So I just kind of went through all my project bags. And uh, some of you wrote me telling me that it was um, so crazy that I had so many projects going. And I found two other projects that I didn't. That I didn't show you, that I just had uh, stashed, stashed somewhere else. So I actually always have way too many projects going. Okay, so Teddy is just... You are so cute. Uh, let's start out with the finished objects. Number one. A finished pair of socks in yarn from Fruvelbo in a fluke pot colorway. Uh, which means not totally planned outcome, but uh, Peter, I think you should definitely make this one a regular because um, this, see, it kind of shows up wrong. It looks better here. Okay, so we have like a mm, purpley. I am looking for the word for the plant that is around my summer house at this time called Lung in Danish. And I don't remember the English word. Uh, never mind that. Uh, but as you can see, this is somewhat a purple color with some uh, golden orange speckles. And um, yeah, they just turned out so wonderful. I did cast on a new pair of socks because as you know, if you have seen this podcast before, you know that I always have a pair of socks on my needles. So I cast it on a new pair and I will show you those later. Uh, with this pair of socks, I actually cast it on on a 2.5 millimeter for the ribbing at the top, just because, uh, just to get a little more extra room around the cuff. And then I changed to a 2.25 millimeter needle for the rest of the sock. But actually I forgot to do that on the second sock. So I started out on a 2.25 on the second sock and knit the whole, that's fine. That's not, that's not a problem, but uh, for the socks that I have just casted on yesterday, I did the same thing. I'm just going to cast on on a 2.5 just to have a little extra room on the cuff or on the ribbing, only on the ribbing actually. Because let's face it, my legs are not that skinny. So if you don't have super skinny legs, maybe you want to do the same thing. Uh, that's up to you. I always have problem with my glasses and they missed a little bit because when I start to talk and I press record, I get a little bit nervous. And then I get a little warm. Today I am wearing my um, Vanilla Wave sweater. Uh, it is one strand of silk mohair. And I think this is actually just a Telia. And the other yarn is this hand-dyed yarn from De Lille Fauri, which is a Danish hand dryer, but this is a silk mohair um, base. You can take any fingering weight base, it really doesn't matter. But I just really uh, I like the fit of this sweater. Um, one of my favorites. I will link the pattern down below. So if you want to knit the same one. I was actually pretty sure I was going to knit myself another vanilla wave sweater. sweater. In Danish it's sweater. In English, not so much. Uh, the last time I think I talked a little bit about this yarn, which is the Touch Merino Light 
with glitter from Melon Touch in the color Stovepipe. But I changed my plans, but I will, I'll share that with you a little later. First, I want to show you my finished object. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm Kemi Janet on Instagram. If you don't follow me there, um, please go do so. I finished my Giselle shawl in yarn from Le Vienne May. It is a mohair silk uh, in the colorway Sensa. And it is the Merino single in the colorway uh, Yellow Brick Road. Actually, in two skeins of yarn in the single Merino, uh, you will not have enough to uh, do the size that I uh, recommend in the pattern. You will be around 10 stitches short. So if you want to do it in this colorway, you can just totally go for the uh, tough suck instead or the cash merino because uh there is more yardage in the skein of those two bases so if you wanna have this color but not run out of yarn choose uh, the other bases or if you do want to knit with the single merino like i did just increase until you have 305 stitches instead of 315 stitches it's not a problem it's big enough as you can see this is huge and uh, okay, that didn't work out really good. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, there we go. I love it. I love the color combination in this. I love the. I love the effect of having two layers that are so different in texture and in base. Um, I love the lightness of the lace and this extra color you have on the other part of the shawl and also for extra volume and warmth if you uh, wear this in the winter it's just lovely I'm actually thinking about making a pattern just for this lace part but in a thicker yarn so it won't take as long because maybe that's what holding some some of you back from knitting this is that you think this is takes forever and it is hard. It's not hard. But yes, it, it does take some time to do this on a 3.5. But you know, knitting should be also about enjoying the process. So for me, sometimes I like to knit things that I know is a fast knit and because I want the result, but other times I just really enjoy the process and finishing something um, finishing something I could be really proud of and that will last for a long time and that I know this took me a long while um, but I love it and uh, I really really I'm so proud of this Giselle Show design uh, you can buy this yarn uh, at Le Bien Aimé's uh, web shop um, in Paris and I'm sure if you live overseas you can buy it I know you can get this uh, in the state as well and everywhere in Europe they ship from Paris so it's they ship from Paris I think all over the world anyway so that should not be a problem uh, originally I designed the Giselle shawl in these colors and the lace part is a lace from Lang Yarns and the base or what you call it, the background color is um, the background color is this Manos de Uruguay Fino in the colorway Morning. I sell um, kits in my shop so if you want to do the original version of the Giselle show just uh, go to my web shop and you can buy the kit so you have the mohair and the uh, base and of course the pattern and um, the printed versions of the pattern that I have are Danish so if you want the English version just let me know and I'll print it out for you and send you the English English version of the pattern 
or I can send it to you as a download link. That's up to you, but just let me know if you want to buy the yarn for this. I will help you out. Um, as you can see, this is, it's practically the same size. Of course, this is a like a, an inch longer or something. It's really not that much. Maybe two inches. Um, yeah, so this is the original version. And this is the new version in new yarn and new colors. So let me know if you have any good ideas for other color combos. If you want to knit this shawl, what colors do you want to combine? I would really like to know. That'd be fun. And remember to uh, use the hashtag Giselle Shawl if you actually do work uh, work uh, this shawl yourself because it's just so fun to me to see all the different versions and color choices and stuff like that. So that was uh, that's it for finished objects. Um, today in Denmark it is so cold and it feels like fall even though it's still August and I am invited to uh, like a, a garden party tomorrow. So I'm really hoping the weather is going to shift. Um, sadly, I don't think it will. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to share with you is actually a little sad. Because, um, as you know, or maybe you don't know, but if you have watched the podcast before, you know that I'm working on a sweater for my husband. And I, I was so good. I have actually made a lot of progress on this, um, on this sweater. And the other day I was, uh, at work and I was knitting on this at work and my colleague, uh, Nils, he said, is that for Lars? I'm like, yeah, but that's too small. I'm like, no, no. Because I worked out the pattern, so and I did the math, so I should know that I know that this is going to fit him because uh, it is designed for him. But it couldn't, I couldn't get that out of my mind, so I went home and I looked at my notes, and uh, I did a miscalculation. So yes, so it turns out I'm knitting a size small or medium at men's men's size. And Lars is definitely not a small medium. He's more like a large, extra large. He's a very tall, slim man, but he's very tall. So there's no way this is going to fit him. And I actually haven't told him yet because I'm afraid he's going to want me to rip it back and start over. And what I really want to do is just finish this one and find someone that will fit it. <laughs> and then... Uh, do a new one for last. Maybe in the same yarn or maybe in another yarn. Sometimes it's actually fun to do the same pattern in two different yarns. And this could be the yarn suggestion <laughs> number one. And I can have a yarn suggestion number two. So if you don't want to knit it in alpaca like this, you can knit it in maybe the other yarn that I recommend <laughs> for sweater number two. Hmm. Anyway, it's it's always a good idea uh, to knit two sizes. I usually don't have time to work two different si knit two different sizes myself for one pattern, but uh, sometimes I do, and I think this time I'm going to have to because there's no way Lash is going to fit into this, and um, I really wanted to give him a sweater, but maybe it's all for the good because he's going to wear this sweater I think a lot around the summer house working, and maybe an alpaca sweater is not actually not the perfect. A yarn for a sweater like that. Maybe he needs something more of a wool, woolly wool, that'll um, I think be more um, tense, is that the word? Or not as open as this alpaca, so it'll keep the wind out a little bit better. That's what I'm thinking. So I actually have to talk to Lars and say, could you please just uh, pick another yarn? for um, your version and then I can um, finish this in a small medium and actually maybe have my nephew model this for me 
it might even be too big for him, or too small for him i don't know but um we will see but i was just so happy because you know i made up a, a lot of progress i'm only like uh 10 centimeters or four inches away from the ripping at the but i can totally see now that it looks small i don't know what i was thinking anyway i know alpaca will grow so uh once i wash it uh it will probably grow a little bit but we will see now i just kind of hide it in my project bag and kind of just ignore it for now we will see what's going to happen we will see what Lars says because if he really wants this yarn in this color i'm just gonna rip it back start over and that's fine next project i have in this little project bag this is the small project bags from bags by hoyer and actually i have a little bags by hoyer news as well that i will share with you at the end of this episode so in last year i had two advent calendars i had one from homespun house and i had one from fuvelbo and this is some of the leftover mini skeins i have from fuvelbo and they have been laying in one of my baskets for a while and they just look so cute together and i decided i want to make socks surprise uh, I just cast it on the green because I'm going to use the green for the cuff, heel and toe. And then I'm going to work stripes with these three. I'm very inspired by the stripes that Petra did in her socks. Um, kind of wider stripes. So I think I'm going to do 10 rounds of each. So a stripe will be 10 rounds. And I'll stripe with three and contrast with this. I just cast that on yesterday, but I think these colors look so good together. Uh, these three are really cute. And then the contrasting green, I really like. So I have this in my little sock project bag. So I can take that with me on the go. And then I have another project. I found it. I took um, Esther to the dentist this morning. She just had uh, bracers on her teeth like a month ago or two months ago. So today she had to go and get those. They tighten them a little bit every now and then. In here I have something that's really not much to show. Tiny prog progress. Um, but a few i think actually it's it's has already been a few years i did a blanket uh it's available as a download it's called the felbe hansen blanket and i did that blanket for my own living room inspired by the colors of a painting by my great grandfather whose last name was felbe hansen so that is why it is called the felbe hansen blanket i will link that blanket down below as well um and then when a friend of mine that's three years ago or something like that she had a baby and i knit her a blanket that's very similar to the felpe henson blanket except that's it's more like a baby sized blanket and that has never been published and now because i have a colleague who's having a little baby girl i'm going to knit him a blanket or actually the baby a blanket um, and I want to do it just the same style as the Felbe Hansen blanket because I just like the um, that it's so simple, nice material, no fancy pansy, nothing, just modern, plain. That's what I want. Um, so my plan is to actually work these two together. The pink one is a 100% uh, like a wool. This is from the Danish Garnusel and the little white one is a very thin cashmere also from Garnusel and I just knit these two together until I run out of the pink one and then I will be joining a yellow so half of the blanket will be white pink the other half will be white yellow 
and I do not know when I will run out of this pink one so whenever I run out I'll just continue with the yellow and we will see um, yes I think sometimes sometimes it doesn't have to be difficult or complicated or a lot of lace pattern sometimes it just it's okay that it's just simple and it's the color that kind of talks in the material uh, on itself that is uh, in focus or has uh, not in focus but um, the main purpose with the baby blanket is to keep the baby warm and for me that's all about nice quality yarn and nice colors so that's what I'm gonna do for the little baby girl that's due here in November so I'm working uh, on this for a little bit and uh, I just I really enjoy having mindless knitting projects where you just knit back and forth and back and forth in nice yarn and watch TV. I really truly enjoy that. So that's uh, next and I think that will actually be a pattern and I know it's just a simple simple pattern to do but um sometimes it's just nice to have someone tell you how many stitches to cast on and how how uh, long to knit so that's another project that i'm working on and uh and then i was thinking because because i was knitting on this baby blanket i kind of um went through my stash to see what yarn would be good for a baby blanket and then today I I uh, opened this box, or actually it was yesterday, and this is all tiny alpaca uh, skeins. This is the uh, Elva yarn from Filcoleta. And I was just thinking, maybe this could be a cute blanket. So use up all these um, alpaca skeins, but also have it Maybe knit it uh, with a strand of a thin off-white wool or not a mohair because alpaca and mohair I think it's just it's too drapey for a blanket. Uh, but I'm not sure. Do you have any ideas? Let me know down below. What do you think I should do with all these? I think there are 30 different colors here. Uh, the only thing I know that I'm not going to do is that I'm not going to do all of them in one because I really don't like rainbows. I don't like rainbow blankets, rainbow socks, stuff like that. It's just not my thing. I like multicolored stripey things. That's fine. But I don't like to organize the colors as a rainbow. And that doesn't have anything to do with the rainbow in itself. I think it looks pretty on the sky. And uh, for um, as a symbol for um for pride and stuff i'm totally into that it, that is not the that is not the reason why i don't like the rainbow i just i just don't like it i just don't like to knit and make the stripes uh rainbow stripes i don't like that so if i do a blanket and use all the colors i'm not gonna go rainbow i'm just gonna go crisscross i think but if you have any good ideas on what to do with all these gorgeous skeins of yarn it's um it's a thin alpaca so it's uh, 175 meters which is almost the same in yards except it's a little more in yards so maybe it's like 190 yards i'm not sure but um but uh, it's still 25 grams so as you can see it's not it's not uh it's not a whole lot of uh there is not a lot of yardage in one skein, but um, maybe a crochet something. I don't know. Let me know if you have any good ideas because uh, actually I think they're so cute. I really don't even want to take one out. I um, I get this from Filcolena because they send it to designers and so we know how the yarn feels and the colors and we can kind of, if we want to make a new design, we have the yarn available. Um, but, but because it looks so cute, I'm not going to do a test with any of it because I'm going to ruin it. I think actually the only one I have ruined a little bit is this one because I was making 
for an Estes vest. I was unsure if I was going to use this. And then, because Esther and I were working on another idea for a bubble cardigan with bigger bubbles, we used this. Hmm. It looks amazing, doesn't it? Okay, I still have it in the original box. <laughs> yeah, I just think it looks so cute. The last time I talked a little bit about this uh, um, very pretty blue yarn. I hardly ever knit anything in blue, but I really like to wear blue. And uh, I was at my friend's yarn store and she had these on her wall with all her metal and touch yarn. And I said, I need to buy four of these before they sell out because I know that metal and touch are not going to keep um, making yarn with glitter. They're going to take that out of production for some reason. And I just needed these four. And I had decided that I'm going to knit myself another melancholy sweater. The one that I have is the sweater that is actually on the front of the pattern, if you buy the pattern. And um, it was the prototype, which means that the color, the turtleneck, is not as long as I would have wanted it to be. It's when you buy the pattern, it will tell you um, to wait the long, the long turtleneck but um for my own version i just didn't knit it long enough so i really want another one so i can have a long warm turtleneck for winter i'm going to use this color so today i'm going to go to the yarn store and find myself a mohair that'll look good with this one and then i will cast on for the sweater for me and i can't wait because look can you see it is just so gorgeous. And then I, uh, the last thing I'm going to say today is that I finished my um, patchwork quilt blanket. I showed that in my uh, episode number 31. I showed you how I finished the blanket and what it looks like. And I took it to the summer house and it's going to live there with the pillow that I made out of the scraps from the blanket. So far, so good. That was the fun process, such a fun project. And my aunt has been so nice to help me out with that uh, blanket. And someone has asked me, so what is the next uh, quilt you're going to make? And I'm going to make this quilt. I'm gonna put a, sorry. I'm gonna put a picture in here to show you the uh, quilt that I wanna make. It's called the Deco Quilt. And it is made from Lo and Behold Stitchery. I will uh, put her uh, Instagram name here and I will put her a link to her uh, web shop down below. Um, when I found her profile on Instagram, I knew that I will be making more quilts in the future. She is just the sweetest person and she makes just the most amazing uh, patchwork quilts that doesn't look like they were made in the early 90s because I think that has been my problem with patchwork is that it's um, sometimes it just looks a little old fashioned from, or just not my color choice or not my uh, taste. But um, she has just done an amazing job to kind of bring quilting and patchworking into the modern, more modern look. And um, I think she does an amazing job. So go check her out if you are just curious or uh, into this whole quilting thing. And the final thing, I said I had uh, news for Bags by Hoya. And I will be introducing an extra large bag. I don't know when exactly it will be ready because my aunt has to make them and I don't want to stress her because she's not 30 years old anymore. So I'm allowing her to take the time she needs and we will just wait for her to be done. It's no problem. But let me show you some of the fabric because it's so pretty. This is a heavy washed canvas and it's so hard to show you the exact color. 
Mm. It is pink, purple, nude, rose, pink. Gorgeous. This is color number one. It's a thick canvas. Um, and this is the other color. It's more like a, this is called grape, the colorway they call it grape. And I think they call this a uh, dusty rose or something. I can't remember, but this will be the two colors. And, uh, and I'm going to keep one for myself. I think I will only have uh, five in each color. Um, I, I was afraid to buy home more fabric because this is a really expensive fabric because it's a, a thick uh, canvas. So this is a pricey fabric. Um, so I'm just gonna take this home to begin with, and we will see if it's something that you will that you like, and um, maybe I can have more. Maybe I can even buy home buy home. Maybe I can even get um different colors we will see but these two i thought were the prettiest ones and i also ordered some christmas fabric that is just gorgeous and i'm going to be making some project bags out of the christmas fabric but actually i could use your help here because would you like christmas project bags with a Christmas theme. It's not way Christmassy. It's more like a winter, actually. So it's not that you can never ever wear it except for, it's not filled with Santa Claus. It's not Christmassy like that. It's more like a warm winter feeling. Um, but I need to know, would you like XL project bags, large project bags or small project bags for a Christmas theme? So these are the small ones and these are the large ones and um, the extra large one will be even bigger so you can have it over your shoulder and you can carry uh, like sweater weight, sweater weight quantities of yarn in the XL project bag. Would you be interested in Christmas bags in the large, no, in the extra large size? Or do you think that you will only have Christmas themed project bags in the two smaller sizes? Let me know before I have all these bags sewn and no one will buy them. Um, I think that's it. I actually did work a few squares on the blanket for my sister-in-law, but I'm just gonna save that to next time because actually two squares, it doesn't it doesn't look like much, so. Uh, that's it, guys. I will see you in two weeks from now. That will be September 9th. I will see you there. Take care.